How do we implement the religious identity? In a word, education. In a word, education. This has to become a focus for us. We have to turn our attention, our resources, our talents, our abilities to educate our community, especially our children, our young people, and build their religious identity. A sister from my community, a young sister from my community, came from a Muslim family, parents were generally practicing, went to the Islamic school, etc. etc. You can check off all the boxes. They were all there. The mother of this young sister shows up at my door one day, knocking, crying her eyes out, telling me that she just came home and she's told me and she said this has been going on for a couple of years. She no longer believes in Allah. She no longer believes in Islam. She wants to renounce all faith, everything altogether. It's gone. What happened? I don't understand what happened. So I calmed her down. And the sister, the, the young sister in question was in the vehicle, in the car, called her up, called her inside, sat her down, my wife was there as well, and started talking to her. And what ends up happening? This sister again was getting a degree in microbiology or something, third year of college. Since the beginning of high school at the very least, through three years into college, seven years of this person's life they've been studying science. And I asked her very simple, I don't believe in Allah because of this reason, that reason, this reason, that reason, all these scientific reasons. So I asked her a very simple question. I said, if you're going to make a life-changing, life-altering decision, shouldn't you do your research? Don't you owe that to yourself? Absolutely. So I asked her a question. When's the last time you read the Qur'an? The translation of the Qur'an at the very least, from cover to cover. When's the last time you read a book on the life of the Prophet ﷺ? An educator should have provided that to her. But an educator wasn't there, so she had to go and seek out this education. At least I was there in some capacity to guide her through this process. And what ends up happening? So I told her, I told her, mom, leave her alone, give her space, that's it, don't be breathing down her neck. I gave her a translation of the Qur'an in a book on the seerah, and I said, read. Just do your research, we'll talk in six weeks. Until then, no talking, just do your research. Sister reaches out to me three weeks later, saying, problem solved. Problem solved. Today, this sister, mashallah, practicing her deen, praying five times a day, attending classes and halaqat by the shuyukh, married, raising a family. All of that is there. Why? Because of that education. Classically speaking, there are two elements of this education in terms of building the religious identity that are emphasized. Ta'aleem and tarbiyah. Ta'aleem and tarbiyah. Ta'aleem is actually understanding and knowing one's religion. Grasping the basics of the religion. And if I was to be asked, what are those basics of the religion? Because you can study the, religious end, the religion endlessly. I, I conduct, I teach a seminary program, a full-time seminary program, where we're reading everything from usul al-fiqh to ulum al-Qur'an to fiqh to aqidah. We're reading through all these things in classical Arabic texts. So it's an endless ocean that's there. But what is the absolute basis of that? It is two things. Number one is the Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because that is the foundation of our religion. That is the scripture, to borrow a more general term. And secondly, and pay very close attention to this, the life of the Prophet wasallam, which is a part of his sunnah. So it is still Qur'an and sunnah, but within the sunnah, because the sunnah is also a very broad umbrella, I'd like to emphasize the life of the Prophet wasallam, the prophetic biography, the prophetic experience. Because when we read a hadith from a hadith collection, it is extremely beneficial and believe it or not, it is actually the overwhelming legal source of our religion. Most of our fiqh and our legality is derived from the ahadith, the collection of a hadith. But when we talk about forming a religious identity, it is actually the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu actually talks about this. Where he says that we started teaching our children the seerah, the life of Muhammad Rasulullah ﷺ, from the time that we would teach them the Qur'an. The generation of the tabi'un say, our primary concern was to preserve the life of the Prophet ﷺ and be able to transfer that to coming generations. And when people go out there and live the Qur'an, when people go out there and they live the Qur'an, and they live the prophetic example, and they impart knowledge and education, even if it be quote-unquote worldly secular knowledge, but they realize deen within their lives, that will be the greatest way to pass Islam on to a future generation.